we managed to reduce the consumption of uh, cleaning products with, mm. uh, I think it was 14.6% uh, yeah. in less than a year. Uh, which on this very small hospitals with only with only two thousand employees was mm. almost uh, five hundred liters of cleaning products, and then we managed to reduce the consumption of plastic bags for mm. garbage simply by looking at is this too big a bin yeah. for what we actually need in this room, and yeah. do we have three bins in the room where we could only use one or two? And that exercise resulted mm. in a reduction of plastic bag consumption on the hospital uh, around 16%. And that was 2.4 tons of plastic. Hello and welcome to the Sustainable Healthcare Podcast. Uh, Joachim here in the studio and I have a real treat for you today. Uh, I'll be having a lovely conversation with uh, Maria Gallen. Uh, she's the head of uh, Center for Sustainable Hospitals at uh, Denmark's uh, second largest uh, healthcare system, uh, central region of Denmark. Uh, and she leads a team that works with how to actually integrate sustainability at hospitals in the care pathways uh, with uh, clinical personnel. And it's super exciting. Uh, she has a lot of real life stories uh, and and good cases, um, and it was an absolute joy uh, to have her. Uh, before that, I would just like to say that I am so thankful to all of you that are listening out here. Uh, we uh, were the top five percent uh, of most shared podcasts uh, at Spotify last year, and. That's uh, because you guys are sharing. So really, really thankful for that. But I also just learned that only 8% of you who are listening are subscribing, uh, which means you might miss out on some great episodes. And uh, it would also, uh, the more subscribers we have, the easier it is for us to get uh, interesting people on the podcast. So if you could do me a favor and subscribe, I would really, really appreciate it. And let's see if we can get that 8% to rise. For now, uh, enjoy Ma Maria Gellen and a good talk on sustainability at hospitals. Welcome to the Sustainable Healthcare Podcast, Maria. Thank you. Uh, so good to have you here. Uh, it's good you to are be here. an all star in uh, our small <laughs> ecosystem of uh, sustainable healthcare. Uh, you uh, really are. Likewise, uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, it's really good to have you. But mm. uh, to our listeners who, who don't know you, uh, what do you work with in, uh, in sustainable healthcare? Um, thank you for, for a nice presentation. All star, I'm not quite sure I can identify with that <laughs> term, but um, I work with the sustainable uh, transition focusing on circular economy mm. uh, in the Danish healthcare sector. Uh, in the hospitals yeah. uh, as uh, the focus area. Um, I am a leader of Center for Sustainable Hospitals in mm -hmm. central Denmark region, mm -hmm. which is a unit that was established in 2021. So mm -hmm. it's rather new, growing rapidly. Um, and uh, basically we are put uh, mm -hmm. In the world, what do you say, our raison d'être is yes. uh, to support all the units in the central Denmark region mm. uh, to reach the goals yeah. in the strategy concerning mm. circular economy. Yeah. But of course, our perspective is on sustainability in a very broad uh, definition. Yeah. And the central region in Denmark is a healthcare system uh, consisting of how many hospitals? Uh, five hospital units plus uh, the psychiatric department and the social area as well. Wow. Yeah, and it's the second largest region mm. in Denmark. And what mm. drew you uh, towards sustainability? Uh, uh, the meaningfulness, basically, I think, yeah. a personal value. But I was drawn uh, to uh, yeah. to working with sustainability from uh, from my formerly professional yeah. work as yeah. a midwife. Yeah. Um, so it was uh, really a you know, it's pretty, uh, <laughs> what do you say, common story of a clinician yeah. being frustrated. And mm. there are plenty of uh, of those out there still um, mm. frustra frustrated over <clears throat> the fact that I could see how our consumption was moving from multiple use tools mm. and equipment to single use and mm. uh, witnessing how every other organization apparently 
yeah. uh, was uh, was focusing more and more on sustainability on and on the consumption, but mm. uh, standing inside the healthcare system, I really didn't feel the agenda pushing mm. from anywhere to no. anywhere. It was simply not a topic of discussion no. uh, at the clinics. No, no. a few years ago, yeah. uh, back in 2017, that was my last year in the mm. birth department. Uh, it was not on the agenda anywhere. Mm. Um, oh. Very uh, <laughs> presented in a shadow kind of way because yeah. there were, of course, uh, the sustainable development goals um, mm. was uh, framing some of the development strategies, but it was mm. not a, it was not concrete. It was not mm. focusing on our own consumption, yeah. uh, which it turned out uh, was, mm. of course, uh, the largest uh, emitter of uh, CO two. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah and. Fast forward to today where there's a, mm. a lot of exciting stuff going on. And I think your journey is quite symptomatic for mm. a lot of the developments that we've seen uh, in the industry. We yeah. Also call it the S-curve at, at Green Innovation Group that has been going very slow mm. in the healthcare industry for a long time, mm. which can uh, lull people into sleep because now it's actually going uh, very, very fast. Mm. Uh, and I think we managed some some great uh, achievements uh, at the center in the region uh, mm. over over Thank the you. last uh, couple of years mm. um, so how did you take on this challenge because uh, like mm. you said that there was not a lot before the center and before you yeah no there were some of course yeah. um but i think i'm being a midwife and uh, yeah. uh, from basically how I grew up uh, yeah. was uh, was dealing with things in a quite concrete way. Yeah. Uh, of course, focusing on the visionary perspective, but we need to do something. Yes. That's like how I like to work. Yeah. So, uh, so the first thing I did was to start up some concrete project, not knowing anything about if it was the right prioritization, yeah. actually. <laughs> was yeah. this the right place to start? Yeah. But we need to start somewhere. Mm. And luckily, there was a hospital management that supported, uh, mm. let's start this journey. So actually, the first thing we did was to reach out to uh, the Nordic Eco Label yeah. um, and asking them, how can you somehow help us in a hospital trying to be more sustainable? Because we mm. need to start somewhere. We need to do something. Mm. And we started out with a certification process of the cleaning services within the mm. hospital that had never been done before. Mm. So that was the first concrete action yeah. that we started out. And we managed to do it to uh, have the hospital uh, cleaning in the regional hospital of Rannes, mm. certified with the Nordic Eco Label in 2020. Mm. It took almost two years. <laughs> Revealing a bit of the complexity within yeah, this area. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, also because I mean, uh, cleaning in a hospital setting is not just a n normal cleaning. No, where if it's not. I don't vacuum well <clears throat> enough, uh, my wife might say something. But here we are <laughs> talking uh, yeah. uh, life and death in, in yes. the extreme. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, um, and from there, it uh, of course it. Um, turned out quite fast when I started talking about the subject, also mm. from stages, stages within mm. the region, that yeah. there were hundreds and thousands uh, in yeah. the years of employees that had the same concern and had yeah. the same motivation. Uh, okay, yeah. They really wanted to do something differently. Because mm. when you are a healthcare worker, I think it's uh, quite um, common that you are driven by the inner motivation of making a positive difference Definitely. within society. Yeah, yeah please don't become a nurse or a midwife or anything because of the super uh, <laughs> convenient working hours or anything no else. Or no, false don't do, promises don't anyway. do that. <laughs> yeah. What's really driving people is that yeah. they want to have a meaningful job that makes a positive difference. Yeah. So uh, going to work, trying to make a positive difference for peeping people and then yeah. at the same time witnessing how mm. we are not consuming in a sustainable way, of mm. course, uh, is... Um, yeah, frustrating to people. Yeah. So uh, from there on, um, I reached out to people and people reached out to me and leaders mm. stood up and many things happened and mobilized uh, during the next years mm. in, in the region. Uh, so many wonderful colleagues I should mention by name, yeah. uh, but it ended up with uh, a regional strategy for sustainability mm. that was approved by uh, the regional council in 2021, mm. who was the first strategy for sustainability targeting our own consumption within the organization yes. and not the regional yes uh, or sorry the ge geographic region mm. you mm. could say but the organization being yeah. the hospitals yeah um why was that important 
Mm. It was important because uh, it was a very evident uh, action of uh, our politicians taking responsibility mm. of our own business. Yes. Not just trying to make uh, cooperations between the municipalities of what they should do with their mm. businesses and mm. stuff like that, but really saying the business we're running ourselves, mm. how are we doing that? Yes. And what was also uh, a bit of a um, stepping uh, stone, or what you say, um, was that it was the first time that we had included the scope three. Yeah. And not only did we include it, we also put up uh, quantitative goals within scope three. Nice. So scope free uh, to to listeners who don't know is, is uh, the uh, emissions from this supply chain outside of your exactly. own organization and yeah. outside of the power you are buying. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and I think uh, that was really an eye-opening uh, mm. thing for people in yeah. those years where where we, yeah. for the first time, had data mm. still estimates and yeah. rather poor data, <laughs> but yeah. it showed a very evident picture saying that the largest emissions come from our scope three. Mm. And that was, uh, of course, like putting a gasoline on a glowing fire from <laughs> yeah. all these uh, employees we talked about before because yeah. it really turned out that they're... Um, the idea and what you kind of uh, mm. perceive when you were at work that, mm. oh my God, there's a lot of garbage. Mm. Yes, there is. And it is actually our biggest problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the light in the ceiling. It's yeah. actually the stuff you're yeah. dealing with every and, day. And I really like that take on scope three as well, that uh, you have to think out of, of it as your own consumption and that the way to deal with scope three is also that you have to do a lot of different things different in your own organization where i think for uh, mm. so, some people when they read scope free and they say ah it's outside of the supply yeah. chain so yeah. it's not so much us it means that our suppliers need to do something differently mm. Mm. that's also true it but, is, but for them to do something differently you definitely need to do something differently inside your own organization absolutely well. There are so many yeah. layers of how to deal with scope yeah. three, and it's of course it is mm. basically a value chain cooperation yeah. to change it. But there's so much we can do ourselves yeah. uh, with the way we consume, um, and we've tried to get a hold of some of the potentials within the healthcare yeah. system. Yeah. And uh, and you said there was a lot of uh, support, uh, yeah. which is also what what, what I see uh, when I'm <clears throat> out talking to to clinical personnel, um, uh, but. It's also a tension, of course, because there are some. Uh, it's a very complex setting at a hospital, mm. and there are some uh, priorities that comes first in in safe and efficient treatment. Mm. Um, how did you take those dialogues, and 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 how do you work with that? I think um, one of the things we've spent a lot of time doing mm. in the last two years is learning how to do this, yes. and it is building up a structure around it because mm. every everyone in the healthcare system is busy mm. and they are busy with what you just mentioned mm. the patient safety treating the patients making sure everything is going mm. as well as it can and as it should yeah. uh, so dealing with sustainability is uh, is an add-on even though it's meaningful mm. so how do we actually release uh, mm. attention and resources to do this in the right way mm. so that we know what we're doing is truly sustainable and not mm. just uh, a quick fix or mm. something we thought was more sustainable but mm. wasn't really the right solution anyway. Mm. So uh, we built it up a network. Uh, there's a volunteer network in the region for all uh, employees and leaders. Welcome to join. Yeah. Um, and at those meetings, we try to give people information on basically what is circular economy. Mm. Why is it more important that you use less than we actually recycle? We yeah. of course have to do both, but what mm. is, how how are things connected? What are really the uh, yeah. the, the chains of e efficiency here? Yeah, that's uh, one of the first thing I always go to when you bring yeah. up the uh, the butterfly from El Macafer. Exactly. We need to stop things from getting in. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. And then it's good if we can move closer to the center and so on. We need to yeah. stop things from getting in. Yeah. So yeah. like that circular mindset, of yeah. the way of thinking about consumption is is important to mm. uh, how can you say qualify our mm. organization yeah. in that mindset, that way of thinking. Yeah. Um, 
And we have uh, some microfinancing uh, projects going on okay. uh, where those clinicians who see something, mm. like, could we stop using that? Or why mm. is that single use? Once it was multiple use, mm. why did we change? And mm. can we maybe even completely stop doing this? That's yeah. That's the best part. Best yeah, part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Choose wisely. There's an organization yeah, yeah, called, yeah, you know, that's yeah. really the top of the hierarchy. Mm. Uh, so, um, so we had these, we have still these microfinancing projects. So mm. the clinicians that get these idea actually mm. get some resources and um, and some support for mm. for figuring out if it is a good idea. Yeah. And then of course it has to be scaled out afterwards. Mm. So we're working on methods and models for that as well, mm. which is complicated. But yeah, um, how do you? Because I see that uh, well, both at hospitals, but a lot uh, in the private companies as well that. When you start lifting rocks, uh, as we do as consultants, mm. you'll find all these wonderful projects where one department is doing something that is obviously smarter, has a good business case, sustainable. Mm. And then we're like, well, why aren't you doing this everywhere then? Copy-paste. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, as an uh, often missed uh, impact opportunity, but it's also very difficult to do it's in practice. So difficult. how do you yeah. work with that? It's a very yeah. well-known yeah. phenomenon from health innovation yeah. in yeah. general. I yeah. think it's not just sustainability. Yeah. Um, we might have an advanced action, actually, I think, yeah. in sustainability because yeah. we're not directly in the middle of people's professional pride, you could say. It's yeah. like the add-on I said before. Mm, it's a very mm. meaningful add-on. So it might be easier to scale out and implement. Mm. Um, there are so many things making it difficult. There's a yeah. human psychology, yes. not invented here, stuff like yes. that. Um, but we also have, like you mentioned before, all the hygiene and safety things. Mm. So the thing that you can... Uh, uh, with advantage not do in a whatever mm. something ward yeah. might not be a good idea to do in another kind of ward or mm. in an operational theater there's another yeah. codex for hygiene that there is in the uh, birth department and mm. whatever that's definitely one of the challenges yeah. um, so what we've tried to do you asked before how do you mm. deal with all mm. these obstacles that are mm. in in healthcare and in the complexity mm. that mm. that has to be in there we've tried to uh, find a method of the when, when we f- when we find something mm. concrete that can be done differently mm. like we could stop using this bed covering paper for mm. instance or we could use multiple uh, medicine cups instead mm. of single use cups or mm. whatever Good. Then there are, we call it churches. We need mm. to pray in all these churches. Okay. We, <laughs> this. we need to point. ask the hygiene, is it a problem according to your field of expertise? Mm. We have to ask the work environmental specialist, mm. yeah. uh, is it a problem according to your field of expertise? Mm. And so on and so on. And then we would like pray in all these churches and figure yeah. out where are the challenges yeah. uh, and how do we deal with them if we yeah. want to change consumption here? Mm. And when we've approved all these, well, mm. in some way, it should then be possible to just scale it out. Yeah. Um, but then there are the local differences anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's always difficult, but but we're mm. really trying to build up um, yeah. like a catalog yeah, of yeah. knowledge of what yeah, you can do. And you have some some wonderful cases. Uh, could you uh, share some of those uh, with us of actual uh, changes you have made? Um, mm, yeah, 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 we can. Uh, we could start out by putting on the results of the certification of the hospital cleaning, actually, because yeah. now I mentioned that already. Mm. Uh, and we managed to reduce the consumption of uh, cleaning products with, mm. uh, I think it was... 14.6% uh, yeah. in less than a year, uh, which on this very, very small hospitals with only, with only 2,000 employees was mm. almost uh, 500 liters of cleaning products. And then we managed to reduce the consumption of plastic bags for mm. garbage simply by looking at, is this too big a bin yeah. for what we actually need in this room? And yeah. do we have three bins in the room where we could only use one or two and that exercise resulted Mm. in a reduction of plastic bag consumption on the hospital uh, around 16 percent and that was 2.4 tons of plastic wow well done yeah thank you it's not me it was like it's a it's a good business case too because you're buying less stuff yeah the uh, yeah the cost of the certification was earned in by those reductions itself um and again 2.4 tons of plastic on Mm. waste bags and it was a small hospital with 2,000 employees we have over 30,000 employees in the region in total yeah yeah. and that's just our region in Denmark and this is even before uh, 
uh, a CO2 tax or we're probably going to, to see uh, in, in the future, I foresee a lot of regulations and fees and taxes around these kind of things that would Absolutely. make it an even better business case. But just yeah. even without that stuff, you will still... Mm. Yeah, since then, that, uh, there's been this new uh, regulation on garbage sorting. So we yeah. have to sort even more. So we yeah. don't know if we can stay the yeah. stay on that low consumption of bags yeah. now, but... Yeah. It should probably even out the cost of the bags. Yeah. But anyway, it was a huge uh, learning for for the whole hospital and for our organization mm -hmm. in uh, in order to um, what can you say uh, motivate people in the small everyday changes because yeah. we are so many people and if thousands of people mm -hmm. make a small change that save yeah. like ten grams of plastic per day or per procedure or whatever, yeah. it actually does add up. Yeah. in a size where it's worth implementing. Yeah, but it can seem insignificant Completely in the situation where... Yes. But this whole transition and the whole mm. exercise, we have a target uh, yeah. in our strategy saying we need to reduce consumption with 30%. Mm. We need to reduce our total garbage mm. amount, mm. sorted or non-sorted, doesn't matter. Mm. The total amount of garbage needs to be reduced by 30%. Mm. And we will never find, I believe, now after mm. searching for a few years, <laughs> uh, for yeah, more mm. than a few years, mm. uh, we, we probably won't find one or two mm. uh, things uh, that will reduce the garbage amount with 10% or 15%. Mm. That does not exist. Mm. I mean, we have to do many, 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 many small things yeah. in order to add up to those 30%. So the waste bin is mm -hmm. one of the things we yeah. need to do, and it does matter. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the big difference to to scope two, and which I also exactly. think is the reason why scope two, the the, the power consumption, has been such a, a relative easy fix for most con uh, organizations because you mm. you have these big chunks where you if you do this this and this, mm. then you're you're more or less there. Mm. Uh, it, but it, that's always simplified. But, but I know, it's, I know. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, There's definitely a tendency there. Uh, but but mm. we are still uh, hoping to find some bigger chunks, and we are mm. chasing them. Mm. Uh, we've made an analysis, uh, mm. another mm. example, yeah. uh, comparing uh, single-use and multiple-use metal instruments. Mm. And as a case, we took those suturing set, which is used every time you make a suture. What is we, a suture? Uh, yeah. When someone uh, needs to be sued. With yeah, a sting? Yeah. Ah, yes. Is it called yes. a sting? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. <laughs> Stitch. <laughs> Stitches? Stitches? I don't know. Stitches. Yeah, Stitches. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, the analysis, mm. which was an LCA screening, mm. meaning that we did include the yeah. soap and the water and the mm. transportation mm. and the packaging and stuff like that. We compared single use to multiple use. And by using multiple use mm. suturing set, mm. we could reduce the CO2 emission with 90%. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. The one thing we did not include was that if we have to switch to mm. multiple use metal instruments, mm. <laughs> we might have to build a bigger uh, sterilization yeah, department. Yeah. So how? what is the uh, uh, return of investment mm. uh, on both the financial mm. side and on the uh, environmental yeah. side, building a new building, if we have to do that? Mm. We don't know that yet. We are mm. trying to... Uh, yeah. Oh, we're not trying to. We are starting up a mm. project where we need to go into the implementation uh, yeah. phase and analyzing on how do we then implement this result. Because yeah. that was a cl quite clear result. Yeah, um, that, yeah, and that could be a big chunk. If we yeah. could actually make um, a plan, a strategy on how to switch back, you could almost mm. say. Yeah, because it used to be multiple use for a lot of multiple. things. Uh, yeah. Most things even. Yeah, yeah. Um, and back to the churches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are yeah. nothing uh, more or less hygienic. Mm. You, you can use both. We yeah. are using uh, mm. both versions right now. Mm. Uh, and that's just as good. Mm. Uh, work environmentally, most clinicians prefer the multiple use tools because mm. it's a better quality. They're mm. much uh, nicer to have mm. in your hands and, yeah. and to use. Uh, and it's precision work, so it's good. Yeah. Um, so it's a good case, uh, and hopefully, if um, if we can make a plan, it will show that it's mm. a big chunk. That's a yeah. much bigger chunk than the waste bags, of course. Yeah, it's also yeah. more difficult. Um, but and we need to do it's, both. Uh, it's in line with uh, what I've, I know. You looked a lot into the research as well, but uh, mm. I, I see uh, a clear pattern on the the published uh, LCA uh, research uh, I, for definitely. medical instruments that uh, 
I don't think I've seen any independent research yet that didn't confirm that multiple use uh, had lower CO2 emissions. I think uh, there are there are a few, but yeah. but uh, but definitely the overall tendency yeah. is. I mean, it makes sense mm. <laughs> that it is a more sustainable mm. uh, way of mm. consuming yeah. to use things yeah. again and again. Yeah. Uh, so, but of of course, with sterilization being a key variable, that uh, it's a key that, variable that needs to be yeah. uh, understood uh, so thoroughly. Yeah. So, if you had to, uh, if um, I I know we have um, listeners out there in the healthcare systems uh, around the world, mm. uh, which is. Um, super nice uh, thing mm. uh, I've uh, had the fortune of uh, speaking to someone from Malaysia the other day who's listening to the podcast okay. and it's wow. just uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so nice so uh, um, what advice would you give to uh, to any healthcare system or clinicians uh, starting up maybe uh, feeling a bit overwhelmed uh, mm. I think I would um advice that was really hard to just give one advice you can give several <laughs> but like where, where, if you had to give some like a yeah. first thing to do or yeah. some key principles or, yeah. yeah yeah i think uh one of the first things to do is to make an organization yeah build up an organizational structure around this because mm. we wouldn't have gotten anywhere mm. i don't think we've gotten far enough but uh, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have gotten anywhere if we haven't had our network and if we hadn't had our sustainability consultants which we have mm. now so these in are full-time every time employees full time employees at yeah. each hospital yeah. one person mm. but still yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are trying to build up their local network and that's really a scaling out system mm. it's like mm. veins i mean we have to spread out mm. uh, these things and if we don't have anything to spread it out through then it will just get stuck and we will yeah. do a pilot test with very low value. Mm. So you need to build up an organizational structure because one thing is that's yeah. where you spread out. It's also where you get in all the yeah, good yeah. ideas and the information yeah, from because these people that are consuming every day, mm. they have a pretty good feeling sometimes of yeah, yeah. what's really not worth it. Yeah. What, what, what of the consumption that I'm mm. uh, being part of every day, uh, mm. which of that is actually adding true quality to the treatment and which part of it does not really. Mm. Uh, And we need that distinction coming Mm. from the clinicians themselves. Um, So that would be one advice. Um, And then I'd say, yeah, yeah, it kind of comes along with the the organizational structure, but you need leadership on this area Mm. because sometimes you need to take some big decisions in order to... uh, to make a lot of people change their behavior. Mm. Um, so that's really important as well. Yeah. When you say leadership, you mean getting top management on board yeah, as well. Uh, absolutely. Because yeah. there's a lot of motivation, there's a lot of meaningfulness in all mm. this, but the pace uh, we need to uh, put yeah. into this in order to yeah. uh, to reach not just our own regional goals, mm. I mean I mean more the kind of the global goals that, yeah, yeah. that we need to, uh, to reach. Um, Leadership decisions definitely need to be taken. Yeah. Um, and um, I assume that's a challenge as well, because uh, in um, for most healthcare systems, uh, a lot at least, uh, they are quite pressured at the moment. Uh, mm-hmm. You see the NHS uh, yeah. in in, yeah. in the UK uh, and uh, Denmark as well, and, and it, it's the case in a lot of different places. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I assume that uh, healthcare system leadership will often be like, we have our hands full, uh, we don't have enough uh, clinical personnel, our budgets are driven all the way uh, to the edge, and I have, I'm still struggling with digitalization. And mm. uh, how do you get their attention also when uh, they are, uh, yeah, how do, how, do, how do you get in there? And, and and how that's, did you take those dialogues? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, sometimes we need to um, to make the clutches to the other uh, yeah. agendas. The yeah. digitalization, for yeah. example, is not the contradiction of sustainability. I completely agree. They yeah. are definitely uh, each other part of each other's solutions. You could mm. say. Uh, so that's one thing to do, mm. uh, not trying to always get the stage for ourselves yeah. <laughs> with sustainability, but really see the connections and yeah. build upon them because they are there. Mm. Um, and then there's the, um, I mean, you could be, um, you could be rough, mm. 
mm. carrot or stick, <laughs> yeah. what you call it. Uh, but the stick could definitely be to put up some KPIs. Mm. Uh, and I wouldn't put up the KPIs for the KPIs itself. Mm. But because if, if we don't do what needs to be done now, mm. it we will be even more busy and mm. even more in lack of resources, of all kinds of resources in the future. Yeah. And, and I think somehow we've reached a point where we need to uh, look at resources as something uh, as a limited uh, mm. thing because it yeah, is yeah. Uh, and uh, and if we look at uh, our problems with uh, with recruitment mm. and retention right now it is a result of uh, of a system of a healthcare system that has not been aware of the fact that even the human resources <laughs> yeah. of our employees they were limited mm. we couldn't just keep pushing mm. somehow uh, it had the effect mm. that uh, that people seek uh, out uh, of our organization mm. and try to find uh, meaningful work somewhere else. And if we keep on pushing the way we are using other kind of resources, material resources, mm. then I think in some number of years, we will be in like of those as well. Mm. Um, so somehow we need to uh, look a little bit further than we're doing right now. Yeah. We cannot look into one-year budgets and stuff like that. I mm. mean, what will we do in five years? Yeah. Do we really believe that we can keep on consuming single-use materials the way we are doing right now mm. uh, in within the same financial framework? I mm. believe the prices for virgin materials will go up. Uh, I believe other I demands agree. will yeah. be put up for organization, even, uh, even ours, mm. uh, from the EU. And mm. I don't know if global uh, <laughs> uh, demands will come just now, but definitely on an EU level, I don't think it will be, it's a possibility. Mm. So instead of just waiting for all those mm. things to hit us and, yeah. uh, and, and make the healthcare system shiver, let's make ourselves stronger. Yeah, uh, might as well be, be proactive and, and, and let's be and proactive exactly future proof and yeah. mitigate the risk. Uh, it's really hard to argument that the way we're consuming is sustainable right now. Yes. So let's, <laughs> let's do something else. <laughs> let's do something else, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Yeah, and I feel like uh, maybe summing up that, and uh, feel free to chip in if, uh, if there's, mm -hmm. there's something you're not agreeing with. That what I hear you saying is that uh, there's a lot of appetite for this uh, from both the clinical and administrative uh, personnel because they're value-driven. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's actually a, a relief and there's a lot of excitement to put concrete things into action mm. and that it often can be a quite good business as well. There are surprise, uh, good savings in consuming less and uh, and doing things smarter. Yeah, and I might up yeah. something in there because yeah. yes, of course there is a good yeah. business in yeah. not throwing things out that yeah. we did not have to use mm. uh, and reducing waste and all that yeah. stuff. Uh, definitely, we can save mm. millions mm. Uh, on that account. Uh, mm. But on the other hand, if we want to switch to, for instance, multiple mm. use instruments, of mm. course, it demands some investments here yes. and now that will be paid back within mm. a pretty short number of years. But we need some investments to yeah. make the turnover. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think uh, maybe as a, as a side note, that's uh, that uh, mindset shift is super important that I think for a lot of uh, organizations and financial departments it seems like there's some discrimination against sustainability sometimes mm. even that if i come with a software system and i say all right it's an investment on this but the payback time is this and then it's going to then it's like okay that's good we mm. understand that cool. but if okay. i do uh, the same thing for a sustainability initiative mm. then it's uh, sometimes there's even more hesitation where it's yeah. exactly the same uh, thing mm. that there's an upfront or, or capex investment and and then there's a, a payback time because mm. the the new optimized way uh, takes mm. some time to um, to earn itself back yeah it does yeah. and and sometimes it's also a matter i think a fact that that we are not uh, we don't have the right data yet yeah. Uh, we have lack of data in improving yeah. or showing or knowing actually mm. that uh, what is the sustainable business case here. Yeah, um, and also that many things are not priced yet, but we, yeah. m I mean, I think it's a very, very fair assumption that they will be priced I, and priced higher, whether that is CO2, plastic, or waste, or yeah. water, uh, yeah. you, na you, you name it. Uh, mm. I think it's very unlikely 10 years from now that there's it not is. going to be uh, a, a price yeah. on all of those things. Yeah. And, and also a price that would make 
uh, it extremely expensive to keep running it the way things are run now. Um, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Because <laughs> we definitely need, uh, yeah. like I said before, yeah. we need both uh, yeah. the inner motivation and all the value yeah. and the meaningfulness, but uh, we definitely also need someone to tell us what to do. Yeah. And money is a very good uh, <laughs> thing. It's a language that everybody is a language we, yeah. <laughs> People tend to listen, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much for coming, uh, Maria. It was an absolute joy. Uh, Thank uh, you. I'm sure our listeners out there learned a lot. And uh, Maria is quite active on, on LinkedIn, so I can definitely uh, recommend uh, following you there. And there's tons more good cases uh, from your work in uh, the mid region. Is that what you Central Denmark Central region, re- Central it's called. Denmark yes. region. We have yes. a homepage. <laughs> yes. Thank, Thank you, you so s- much. Thank you so much for having me here. Hello, Joachim here again. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Always learn a ton uh, when I talk to Maria. Uh, And I think she's just done such an amazing job of uh, putting it, uh, putting sustainability and change into action uh, at the hospitals. Uh, And even though there's a a long way to go, uh, she's exactly the right person to have uh, as head of it. Um, so enjoy your day uh, and if you haven't uh, please subscribe to the podcast I would really appreciate that